Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G and today we're going to take a look at the CZH Labs power pole distribution block. We're going to take this thing apart and we're going to try and answer the question, is this garbage or is this the best power pole distribution block you can get? I'm going to leave the decision up to you. Drop a comment down below. If you do like this and you decide you want one yourself, there is a link in the description. Let's get over on the bench and take a look. This was a Christmas gift from Mrs. T.O. and sort of hinted about this on a previous video. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name, but it is a horizontal 9p dot 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 RCE strip, one input and eight output. Okay. It's power poles. Oh man, I love power poles. Oh, and they did a really cool thing with this. So these are all mounted on the bottom. I mean, you can see that they're mounted on the bottom. And that makes it so that when you mount it to the wall, it gives you downward facing power pole connections over normal under. We'll have to figure out what that is. Over voltage, normal voltage, under voltage. Uh, let's see. We have a 40 amp input fuse, 30, 30, 20, 20, 10, 10, 5, 3. So good for a bunch of accessories. Obviously I can take this three out and I can put a 30 down here. The, the power strip doesn't care uh, where you put your accessories or what kind of fuses you put in there. What really matters is that you don't overload the entire deal on 40. So if you had 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and you sucked all the juice out of them at, all at once, then you would blow that fuse and protect your power supply, which is nice. Let's see what happens when I plug some power into it. Where is my power pole? There's my power pole. Okay, so let's plug some power into it. And normal. We plugged a normal amount of power into it. I don't really have a way to plug less power or more power into it. Um, maybe drain a battery or something. So that explains what that is. This is telling me that there's n you know, just the right amount of voltage or not the right amount of voltage in there. And normal. And technically it doesn't really matter which one of these you put input onto or not because they're all wired together inside, I'm sure. Let's take a look at what else comes in the kit. We get power pole connectors. Are these official or not? Let's see. Well, they're already made it up side by side. That's nice. They have an A on them. And it says power. So they don't appear to be official. I have not had any problems with non-official power pole connectors myself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put these away. Okay, we got nine of those. We got some booties. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine booties. Perfect. And then, did we get enough of these? There should be 18 of these. One, that one's opened up already, but we can fix that mechanically. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So they gave us a couple of extra there in case we mess up, and if you want to pull away the two that are already messed up, then that leaves us with eighteen, which is enough to get the job done without making any mistakes. So that's good. That'll get put in with my other set of power pole supplies that I use. What do we got for owner's manual? We have a circuit diagram. Yep, that's definitely a voltage monitor circuit. It has a buzzer option. We'll have to see if the buzzer option is installed or not. It's the F1008. So I guess it's one input and eight outputs for nine total. Dimensions, schematic, nice. Not really necessary, but nice to have. Let's put all of that in there, get this off to the side. Phillips head screws, let's take it apart, let's see what's inside.
Oh, it does have the buzzer installed. Excellent. <laughs> buzzer option, buzzer disconnect. It has a disconnect. So that's pretty cool. They have a set of jumper pins there that have been cut. I don't know what those are for. So there's your, your circuit that does your overload and undercurrent protection indication. Circuit board mount, power pole connectors. Let's keep going. So the case is made out of metal. Nice high quality case, custom made for this. They didn't really clean up after the solder joints. They put a lot of solder around the 40 amp circuit to help reinforce that. And like I said, these are all connected up top. They go through the fuses to connect to the individual circuits. And it looks like the fused side is the red side. Not sure I understand the purpose of these bars here. So let's get out our multimeter and see what we can determine, see what we can detect. So it'll beep when there is a connection. And obviously that's connected and conducts. And it's connected to each of the grounds which each of these bars are connected to. And then these bars here are connected. Should be connected, yep. So what's the purpose of the bars? Interesting, so this bright green spot here versus this dark green spot. So bright green, dark, dark green. This bright green spot here is a connected circuit trace on the board and it's a nice big fat trace and this should go to the positive side, I believe. If I can get in there. Oh, I took the fuses out. Yep, I put a fuse back in. to complete the circuit. So positive side through the fuse to the big bus bar over here to the power input. That's a different kind of fuse socket for that 40 amp fuse also. Okay, so not having a fuse in there did disconnect the circuit like it was supposed to. Yeah, so I can't find a purpose for those bars to be there. These these bars right here don't seem to make a whole lot of sense because they're just connected. So there's a connection there and there, and that's one bar, and there and there, and that's number two, and number three, and number four, and number five, and number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this one doesn't have one at all, and neither does this one. put all the fuses back in so we're not going to be testing an open circuit by accident that we are hoping to find closed. So we will take the power input and that's wired, that's wired, that's wired, that's wired, 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 Wired. 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 And then these are the last two here. Wired. 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 I, I don't see any purpose for that. Maybe one of you guys has a good answer for why that would be a thing, but I don't have an answer for why that would be a thing. Overall though, this thing is in pretty good shape, pretty good design. Maybe those are just really big fuses. Let's get it put back together.
all of those screws miss the circuit board traces, so they're not electrically connected or coupled to anything. The tolerances around these lights are really good, so it's pretty well designed. This hole is where the speaker is on the inside, so that's nice. Let's get these external screws back in. The 5 and the 40 are really close together in color. All right, and the most important part of the assembly is that all of the fuse ratings are readable in the same orientation. Chunzo we, I don't know. Overall, this is a great idea for a Christmas present for a ham. And we are normal. There you go. There is a video right over here that I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.